Righto, Nick Barton, you're in your old home, but you've got a new role. Tell us about what you're doing next. Yes, well, I am in my old, uh, my old home. I, um, I'm still the head coach of the Waikato Rowing Club. Uh, we've now got a, um, a summer performance hub operating within the club um, as a, as a bolt-on separate program from the club. Um, and my role within that is to provide administration support and, and logistics support to, um, to the lead coach, Richard Tox. Last summer he was uh, coaching at Cambridge High School because his daughter was in her last year there. So he's, he lives 30 k's down the road and, um, and obviously he's a lifetime of experience of success at the highest level in the sport and um, uh, his daughter wound up school and, and he was there and we were looking for somebody and, um, and so started the conversation that he might like to help out with a few athletes here, here at the club and, and sure enough um, he did and, and, it, and it's all been going very well so far. Uh, he worked with a number of athletes, four or five athletes over the winter and uh, he, was, he was preparing them for a trial to get into the New Zealand summer squad, of which all of them did. Um, and they couldn't speak more highly of the work that he did with them. And, and this new group that's just started up uh, are really enjoying what he's doing with them and, and things are looking really good. Okay Nick, tell us about those athletes that have gone from the winter squad into the summer squad after training with Dick. Yeah, so Dick came in, um, it was June, came in and started working with those athletes towards that trial in August that was for the summer squad. And so, um, yeah, he had a 100% conversion rate for the, for the five athletes that he was working with. So who have we got? Uh, so there was Juliet Lacroix, Isla Blake, Holly Gray, Veronica Wall and Flynn Watson. We did some work with them over the winter. Hey, pretty strong sculling. Uh, emphasis in those five? Yeah definitely I think um, uh, Juliet and Isla in particular came in and started as sculling and then they jumped in the pier and that seemed to go well and so they, they stayed in that. Uh, Flynn Watson was doing a bit of sculling and also doing a bit of uh, sweeping with um, some of the guys in the, in, the, in the winter development squad so it was a bit of a mix but a lot of the work was done in, in singles here. Singles are a pretty good way to test out who's going fast aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are really the boat of truth, aren't they? You can't hide in a single. So Dick's been working with these guys. What's the energy like from the athletes when they come off the water after he's been coaching them? Yeah, it's interesting. They, they come in uh, pretty tired. They've been worked really hard, um, but they a lot of energy when they come off the water. I think what they really enjoy is the, the, the simplicity of the daily training environment. They, they turn up, they find out what's happening, they go and do the work and they go home and, and there's nothing really in between. And, uh, and Dick works them hard, but he does it in a smart way. Um, this week, for instance, they've got quite a bit of time off, whereas uh, the last four or five weeks it's been pretty full on. But um, they're really enjoying it, finding it quite a refreshing change from, um, from what they have done in the past. Yeah. yeah. Now we know that Dick is, is not one to um, talk too much. How are you getting on with him? Uh, yes, uh, yeah, like he's, he's a great guy, it takes a little bit to get to know, but um, the way that we operate is that uh, I'm, my role is really to provide him with everything he needs to do his job and then try to get out of his way and, uh, and just allow him to do that. We catch up um, every couple of weeks, just talk about anything that's coming up, anything that maybe needs to be um, worked out, uh, and then uh, we go our separate ways for, for, for a time, but um, we're in constant contact. I think probably the, the privilege for me is that I have been able to pick his brains about what I'm doing in the club and you know whether it's technique or training or, or anything like that. Um, he's quite happy to sit down and have a coffee and chat for as long as, as long as needed, which is I consider myself very lucky to be able to, to be able to do that. Yeah, I mean you're a, a well-established coach in your own right. But I guess what an opportunity to be um, coaching with one of the, I guess, the masters of world rowing in the past 25 years, 30 years. Yeah, exactly. It is, um, it is amazing when you look at, at what he's done. You know, the World Coach of the Year a number of times and the and, uh, most successful Olympic coach in the country. Um, and there's no question that he knows exactly what, what he's doing and exactly he knows what to do and what not to do. And, um, and he has his ways. And, um, and I don't think I've ever come across a coach that is absolutely so certain in, in what they're doing. Um, 
But interestingly enough, uh, he still talks about books that he's been reading about physiology and things like that. So he's always sharpening the sword, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it's been it's been great. Yeah. Hey, so let's talk about your role. I mean, um, how exciting is it for you? How are you finding it? I mean, I guess you've just started, but. Oh yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, I'm, I'm very busy with the club and the club is, uh, the club is my main focus. It would take up 95% of my time. Um, but having this, uh, uh, this side bolt-on performance program within the club uh, is great to be able to work in between the two and to be able to try to look at how the two could come together. Um, the way that we operate though is that our hub athletes train at a different time to the club athletes um, and so we don't have crossover in terms of training but for me to be able to see the difference in what's happening, um, it's, our, it's, it's great for me to be able to take the top few in our club and, and say, well, this is what Dick's doing with so-and-so today. Um, how about we try to add a little bit more in or you know, do a bit of this? And so I'm really enjoying that, that aspect of it. Um, yeah, I think that's probably it. Yeah, um, I was gonna ask you, I guess a lot of people might say, you know, having the hub here at Waikato, you just, sort of over the cove from rowing New Zealand in some ways, this, depending on how many athletes you've got, this might only strengthen Waikato Rowing Club uh, when some of those regional clubs around you are possibly struggling for numbers. Do you think there, there's an element where you might be taking those people away from their clubs? Yeah, I can definitely understand um, the concern around that and, and I think it's, um, when you look at what's actually happening, um, the hub, currently as it stands, we have seven athletes and they're all actually Waikato Rowing Club members, as it happens, but the hub is there for all of the North Island and, and Rowing New Zealand will choose, decide who goes into the hub, who's, who's at the standard ready to go into the hub, and that may require some relocating. Um, in terms of our club, one of the beauties of club rowing is that you have junior athletes rowing with more senior athletes and as people come into the club they can work their way through and, and have experiences rowing with premiers or former internationals or current internationals. What the hub has done uh, in many ways is actually removed that opportunity for a lot of the clubbies so we don't have that cream of the crop here anymore. It is fantastic for them and we wouldn't have it any other way, like it's a fantastic opportunity for those athletes. But in terms of actually strengthening Waikato at the expense of others, I don't think that's a concern for anybody else at all. And in fact, it's, um, if anything else, it, it's, going, it's probably going taking it the other way. You've been away with the under 23s this year and um, I guess the, um, the summer hub is basically targeted at lifting the level of our under 23s. How has that helped you uh, in your role? Yeah, um, I, I, think it's, I think it's going to be uh, fantastic for the under 23 program and those um, elites that are trying to break into, into some of the um, winter, winter elite teams next year. I think the thing, as I, and I touched on before, is rowing is such a physio physiologically driven sport. A club can't provide the kind of um, level of training required to be competitive in an international standard. So what happened last year was that athletes would do a club season and then they'd, they'd be get good enough to make a team. But then the start line was, okay, now we've actually got to start building in some volume and some mileage. And, and before you know it, you're on the world stage and you're up against, um, but there's incredible talent internationally. And I think the, the, the strength of New Zealand in the past has always been we worked harder than everybody else. Um, and I don't think we can be strong internationally without having a really strong summer program based domestically. And so I think it's exciting for what it will do for, 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 for under 23 programs in particular. Um, and I think what it does is just push the start line further down the track so that when they start their campaign in April or whenever it is next year, um, that start line's far further down, so this potential ceiling is, is much higher. Hey Nick, great to talk to you. Good luck for the season. Thank you, sir. Appreciate and we look forward to seeing uh, this combination between uh, you and Mr Tonks. Thank you very much. <laughs>